Hi, I'm Cindy Morgan, president of the Red Bank Valley Historical Society. Today we are on the Red Bank Valley Trail, and behind me is the United Valley Soccer Association Field. Why do we call it Pottery Field? You can see a chimney behind me, which is the only surviving remnant of a once prosperous industry. Welcome to the first episode in a series on the Red Bank Valley area called Time Will Tell. Today's topic is Pottery Field. In 1892, a prominent businessman from New Bethlehem named George W. Arblaster purchased the land from the Wolf Spring Company who manufactured springs for buggies and wagons. George would refit the spring factory to produce pottery. He was already successful in New Bethlehem as owner of Pioneer Pottery. His intention was to increase his production. Here is an example of the type and style of pottery that was produced at Pioneer Pottery. George would only own the land for another two years when he sold it in the spring of 1894. He sold the land and the buildings to William T. Putney of Allegheny and Edward A. Hamilton, the postmaster of Hawthorne. They called their business Putney and Hamilton Pottery. Who were William Putney and Edward Hamilton? William Taylor Putney and Edward Alexander Hamilton were brother-in-laws. William was married to Edward's sister, Clara. Here is the census listing from 1920 showing William and Clara. William was the son of the Honorable George Putney and the grandson of the founder of Putneyville, David Putney. Edward Hamilton was the son of W.R. Hamilton, the man who laid out distant and South Bethlehem. This is the earliest known photo of the facilities. Notice the building surrounding the chimney. With financial backing, the partners acquired state-of-the-art machinery and erected another kiln. By 1899, the firm was being called Hawthorne Pottery Company, and Hamilton was the firm's president, and he possessed 50% of the stocks. Fourteen others were listed as smaller stockholders. William T. Putney would no longer be associated with the business in Hawthorne. Over the next few years, Additional buildings and a railroad siding were built to serve the pottery. The plant produced most of its pottery from 1903 to 1921. Here is a photo of the flood of 1920. You can even see crocs and jugs, their main products, in the ice. The crocs ranged in size from 1 to 15 gallons, and the jugs varied in size from half gallon to five gallons. The much sought after collector's items are easily recognized by their uniform light gray color and the name of the pottery. Other products produced were water coolers, pitchers, umbrella stands, and even spittoons. A few other novelty items were reclining lions and assorted small animals. There was also a pint-sized colomit jug. Various other items included batter jugs, bean pots, butter churns, cuspidors, fruit jars, pitcher and bowl sets, and jars for vitrified acid. Items marked with capacity numbers and gallons usually have arrowheads on each side of the number. In addition to the number and arrowheads, Many items have stenciled upon them either HP Co. Hawthorne PA or Hawthorne Pottery Company Hawthorne PA. The factory produced great amounts of Bristol glazed, jiggered, and cast ware. Potter's clay mined from the Red Bank Creek was produced for 20 cents a ton and carried to the factory on a special railroad track. 
We visited the kilns at St. Charles Brickyard, which is an example of what the kilns at Hawthorne would resemble. The kilns were heated with gas. Large downdraft kilns capable of firing 600,000 gallons of product annually were filled by a staff that approached 100 hands. In 1909, the Hawthorne Pottery Company opened offices in downtown Pittsburgh where dispatchers took orders and directed shipments to Eastern America and into Midwest markets by rail. During the 1920s, the American Clay Products Company of Zanesville, Ohio purchased the plant and moved production to Ohio. Just when production ceased is unknown. Around 1930, the land was deeded to Edward Hamilton personally, indicating that the corporation was no more. After the factory closed, the Dean family used the pottery buildings to house the hogs they raised. Folklore notes that local boys could be seen tossing crockery out of the windows of the abandoned building. Today, it is home to the United Valley Soccer Association, where it is used almost daily by young athletes. I hope that you've enjoyed our episode about the Hawthorne Pottery Company. These episodes are made possible by donations and lifetime memberships to the Red Bank Valley Historical Society. The Red Bank Valley Historical Society has been working on a book for 10 years that has this story about the Hawthorne Pottery and many others. This book is going to the printer in the next couple days. So if you would like to order your copy, go to our website at redbankvhs.org.